The things you must know. This is what's known as Dart Pad, and it's a web app provided by the Dart Lang. This neat tool allows you to play with most of Dart's capabilities in real time without having to install any tooling at all. It's a great way to test concepts out quickly and easily. Just enter some code on the left and click run, and you'll see the results on the right. Quick, super useful, and straightforward. All languages have keywords, of course, tokens that you can't use because they have specific meaning in the language you're using, and Dart is no exception. Let's examine those keywords now. I've tried to group them into related concepts that were applicable to try and give you as much context as possible as we go through these. I've also tried to order them in a reasonable way rather than just a purely alphabetical list so that you'll learn about many of the concepts you need to know to be an effective Dart developer in a logical sequence as we go through them. No comment all about comments. I want to start with our discussion by talking about comments in Dart because I feel like commenting, in general, is something that not enough developers do and do effectively. Comments are a critical part of programming whether it's something you enjoy doing or not, and as such, Dart provides three forms of comments. First, Dart supports single-line comments using the likely familiar slash slash character sequence. The compiler ignores anything following this on the line. As such, slash slash can be the first thing on the line, or you can drop such a comment on the end of a line. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting this is an example of good or proper commenting. Quite the opposite in fact. I'm just using it as an example to show this form of a comment in Dart. The second form is multi-line comments, and again here, Dart is typical by using the slash asterisk and asterisk slash marker sequences. Anything between those two sequences is ignored. The final form of commenting provided by Dart are called documentation comments. These comments are designed to produce useful verbiage when documentation generation tooling is used on Dart code. These can be either single line or multi line by using the slash 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 or slash and asterisk slash sequences. As with the other forms, Anything on a line with slash 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 is ignored. However, there is an exception. Anything enclosed in brackets in such a comment is taken to be a reference to a class, method, field, top-level variable, function, or parameter, resolved to the lexical scope of the documented program element. So, for example, class pet number legs slash 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 feeds your pet treats feed treats treat slash slash feed the critter here when documentation is generated the treats text will become a link to the api documentation for the treats class please 
Comment your code and comment it well, most especially if anyone but you is ever going to look at it. Nothing stays the same, variables to begin with. Everything is an object in Dart. Variables in Dart, as in virtually any language, store a value or a reference to something. In some languages, there is a difference between primitives like numbers and string and objects, which are instances of classes. Not so in Dart. Everything here is an object, even simple numbers, functions, and even null are all objects, which are always instances of classes, and all of which extend from a common object class. Variable Declaration and Initialization In Dart, you can declare a variable in two ways. Variable name with var or variable name with some specific type. In every Dart undefined variable default type is null. Here, the dynamic type annotation tells Dart that what X references can change over time. So, if later you do, Dart won't complain that X now points to a numeric value rather than a string. There is, in fact, a fourth and final option for declaring a variable. Since everything in Dart extends from the common object class, this works too. But, as mentioned in the bullet points that started this chapter off, there is an important difference. If a variable is of type object, and you try to call a method on the reference that doesn't exist, then you'll get a compile time error. With dynamic, that won't be the case, and you'll only see the problem at runtime. Constants and final values. Finally, related to all of this is the const and final keywords, both of which define a variable as being a constant, a final immutable value. It works with type annotations too and you can use final instead if you prefer. But, it's not just a preference. 
The difference is that const variables are constant at compile time, which means their value can't depend on anything at runtime. So, if you tried, that won't work, but this will. Essentially, final means you can only set it once, but you can do so at runtime, while const means you can only set it once but its value must be knowable at compile time. One final point on const, you can apply it to values as well as variable. That works as expected, the initial list of values, 1, 2, 3, is printed, then a new list I referenced and printed, 4, 5, 6, and finally the first element is updated, and the list again printed, 999, 5, 6. However, what happens if you move the LST0 equals 999, line before the reassignment of LST on the third line? Well, now you'll get an exception because you're trying to alter a list that was marked as const. This is something a bit atypical in Dart. Variables and other identifiers can start with a letter or an underscore and then be followed by any combination of letters and numbers. Everybody has a type, data types. Dart is a strongly typed language, but curiously, you don't need to annotate types. They're optional, and that's because Dart performs type inference when annotations aren't present. String values. Dart offers a string type which is a sequence of UTF-16 code units. Strings can be initialized using either single or double quotes. Strings can include expressions using the dollar expression syntax. If the expression refers to an identifier, then you can drop the curly braces. String concatenation can use the AND operator, as you can in a lot of languages. 
or it can use adjacent string literals, like this. Numeric values A double precision floating point number, as specified by the IEEE 754 standard, has a type of double. Both int and double are subclasses of number, so you can define a variable as number w equals 5, and Dart knows that X is a double based on its value just like it knows Z is because you specified it. A numeric can be turned into a string using the toString method of the int and double classes. A string can be turned into a number with the parse, method or the int and double classes. Boolean value Boolean values are of type bool, and only two objects have Boolean values, the keywords true and false. Lists and Maps The list class in Dart is akin to an array in most languages. An instance of one is a list of values which are defined with syntax identical to JavaScript. A list uses a zero-based indexing scheme, so list.length1 gives you the index of the last element.
Dart also offers a set class, which is similar to list, but it's an unordered list, which means you can't retrieve elements by index. You have to use methods contains and contain sol instead. The call to contains returns true, while the call to contain sol returns false since chocolate was removed. D. Note that add ing a value that's already in the set does no harm. Dart also has a map class, sometimes called a dictionary or a hash, or an object literal in JavaScript, an instance of which can be created a few ways. The first actor's map is created using braces and with data defined immediately within it. The second actress's map uses the new keyword to create a new map instance explicitly. Elements are added to it using bracket notation where the value inside the bracket is the key and the value after the equals is the value to map to that key. The third version shows that you can also define types for the keys and values in a map. That way, if you try to do, you will get a compile error because 3 is an int but the type of the key is defined as string. After that, you can see a few critical methods being used. The remove method removes an element from a map. You can get a list of the keys and values by reading the keys and values attributes. The is empty method tells you whether the map is empty or not although not shown. A map also provides the contains and contains sol methods just like a list does. Finally, the for each method allows you to execute an arbitrary function for each element in the map. Finally, one last point related to data types is that there is also a special dynamic type that, in effect, turns off Dart's type system. Imagine if you write. Dart knows that you can call some methods on obj like to string and hash code because they are defined by the object class that all objects extend from. The dynamic type is typically used with things like return values from interop activities so you may not encounter it all that much, but it's worth nothing, and it's worth understanding that it's fundamentally different from declaring something of type object. When a single value just won't do,
enumerations need to have an object that contains a fixed number of constant values don't want to have a bunch of variable floating around and don't need a full-blown class then an enum short for enumeration is right for you every value in the enum has an implicit index getter method so you can always find the index of a given value you can also get a list of all the values in the enum through the values property finally enums are especially useful in switch statements and dart will give you a compile error if you don't have a case for all the values in the enum what's your type the as and is keywords I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and give a thumbs up it helps our channel a lot. Thank you. See you in the next episode.